where the Bible tells us, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. The night could represent a time of preparation and revelation. The night. Night times come to all of us. Right? Nobody's exempt. Night times come. And these night seasons uh, could mean different things at different times. The night is a time of quietness. Everything is still. Nothing is moving. And sometimes you come into seasons of life and say, God, nothing is happening in my life. Everything has come to a pause, a standstill. You're in the night. You're in the dark. You're in obscurity. People don't see you. People don't know you. But that's a time of preparation. And that's a time of revelation. Think about some biblical examples. And I'll just refer to two. John the Baptist. In Luke chapter 1, verses 76 to 80. We read about his call. We read about what God had planned for him. But this is how God released him into it. In this place of darkness. Where people, he's not visible. Until God says, time to make you public. Amen? So, but what happened to John in that time in the wilderness or in that time in the desert? That was a time that God put many things in his heart. First of all, John realized who he was. And people came to him and said, who are you? He said, I am the voice of the one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. So that time is a time of preparation, is a time of revelation. Think about the Apostle Paul. Uh, many of us, you know, think that, well, the day he had this wonderful encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ on the road to Damascus, the next day he became this great Apostle Paul. Not so. After his encounter with Jesus, what happened in that time? Paul writes a little bit about that for us in Galatians. In Galatians chapter 1, I'll just read verses 20 to 24. Concerning the things which I write to you, indeed before God, I do not lie. Afterward, that is after his visit to Jerusalem, I went into the regions of Syria and Cilicia, and I was unknown by face to the churches of Judea which were in Christ. But they were hearing only he who formerly persecuted us now preaches the faith which he once tried to destroy. And they glorified God in me. So he's saying, you know, I was in the regions of Syria and Cilicia. Whereas the churches in Judea, they didn't even know me. This great apostle Paul. They only heard a little bit. Some news trickled in. Hey, that man, you know, he came to Christ and he's preaching. So literally, the next approximately 10 years, could be 12, we don't exactly for sure. These are called the silent years of the Apostle Paul. For the next so many years, he was in this area around Syria preaching Jesus, but nobody knew him. The night could also be a time of sowing. Those who sow in tears shall reap in joy. He who continually goes forth weeping, bearing seed for sowing, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. God turns things around. And the change will be so dramatic, so drastic. It's like going from mourning to dancing. It says God will do that. That's what happens when your mourning breaks out on you. You go from your mourning into dancing. And God turns that around. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Your joy is coming. Your morning is coming. Amen. He's going to turn that morning into dancing. The night season of life, this time of obscurity, this time of darkness, in some of us, for some of us, it's a time of preparation. It's a time of revelation. So don't think it's a bad time. Yes, it might be a little painful because we like attention. We like all of that. But hey, God is doing a very important thing in the night season of your life. 